Hello, everybody. My name is Carol Marks, and this is where I host my remarks on glamour, pop culture, and front page news. This podcast is a member of Give Me Liberty Media. Now, let's get right to it. This intro is way too long. Good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday. I am I am hungry, and I am tired, so I'm going to let... What did I say? Hungry and hungry tired? And tired. Yeah, I'm mm-hmm. going to let the gent talk. Uh, I'm, it's a beautiful Sunday morning. The sun's shining. The trees are swaying gently in the tri- light breezes for out of the north. And I'm waking up in my own bed with my beautiful wife. So, I mean, it's a beautiful day. <laughs> What do you think about that? Well, I'd hope you wake up in your own bed next to your wife. Well, there's a possibility that I wouldn't have done that. I know. Do you want to explain? Well, okay. Last night, starting about... Well, what? back up, back up, back up. We start. We watched. We decided to watch a doubleheader of a Bog- Bogart movies. Right. Humphrey Bogart. Exactly. We watched one. We started watching the other one, and I got super tired. Yes. I said, let's stop. Let's go to bed. I'm, I'm tired. I can barely stay awake. And I said, okay. We went to bed. Went to bed. I was out immediately. Oh, yeah. So, it, I mean, it was 8.40 on a Sunday night or Saturday <laughs> night. And, I mean, she was, we got in bed and she's just sound asleep. And I was like, wow, that's pretty good. <laughs> but at about 3 o'clock yesterday afternoon, I started feeling a gut pain. Now, I'm taking a certain medication that's doing something, but I've been on that medication for almost five weeks. So... You know, I've had some ups and downs as far as the, the digestive system goes, so to speak. But last night, my gut started hurting really, really bad. And it got to the point where at about 12 o'clock, 1130, something like that, it was, I, I couldn't take it. I tried everything and I couldn't take it. And I started worrying, uh-oh. So long story short, we went to the emergency room. Now, knowing the emergency rooms these days, if you just walk in and you say you got a stomach ache, you're going to be sitting in there for about 12 hours trying to get somebody seen. So instead of doing that, I opted for the traditional ride on the ambulance. <laughs> however, <laughs> however, when they got here, they told us, <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. well, they don't do that anymore. <laughs> yeah, if you go in on, on a stretcher, it's like, uh, you may get in, you may you not may get, get in. in. You may not get in. It's like, okay. Anyway, we went in and it, it was fine. It was a, I, as far as emergency rooms go, you know, thank goodness I didn't have to sit in a chair out in a waiting list. You know, they did have a room available. I went right in. They took. Uh, yeah, Saturday night in the ER was not going to be fun, uh-huh. but we went to a different. We went to the more private hospital yeah. instead of the. A big system that's here in, in the state and the city. And there were a couple of things that really stood out to me. Number one, when the EMTs came in, I thought, <laughs> you know, wait a minute. Y'all, are y'all out of high school yet? <laughs> because they look so young. They really and, and, did. And, you know, and they're talking in their expertise. And I wanted to say, listen, let me tell y'all how to do your jobs because I'm older and wiser. <laughs> You know, and I was like, no, I can't because they're trained in this and I've got to understand that they are. And then we were getting to the hospital and I go in and I thought I was in millennial. <laughs> I thought I was in a millennial. It was, I looked at these nurses, you know, I'm your nurse. And I'm like, you can't be, you know, you're 12. <laughs> yeah. And they stuck me like they were 12. Oh my gosh. Yes. It, t- it took them four sticks to try to find a vein when I could have just, you know, sl- slipped my finger and given them as <laughs> much blood as they needed. But, you know, they were all kind and they were nice and all, but they were definitely millennial healthcare servers. Maybe even younger than Maybe, that. Maybe. <laughs> well, yeah. But, you know, because I don't know. I just call anybody. Younger it's younger than me. me. You're a millennial. <laughs> and so, you know, and so we, anyway, we went and we got tested and they did all the stuff that they're supposed to do. And uh, my worries were, of course, that I was going to end up having to stay in the hospital or 
get cut or do whatever, but they prescribed some medicine. You know, it's basically said you're on your, you know, you're on your way. The last guy that was, uh, we confront or we can run the last guy that was with us was very knowledgeable, very helpful. He was a little older and he like you know, he was, uh, in more interactive, more interactive. Than These this, other people that uh, when Doogie Hauser came in, I thought, Oh my God. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was the doctor. He by was the way. No, he was socially awkward and everything. Yes, I'm very like, what? Much so. It cracked me up though when you were telling him, "Good job." Good job. You gave him the thumb up. You said, "Good job." Good job. I'm like, "Oh, Carrie, please don't do that." <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it was like talking a, down to him just because he's younger than you. <laughs> I, well, I did. I said, "Y'all did a great job." Thank you. <laughs> I didn't go. You know, the, what's your, what's her name on TV that does that? Rachel. Rachel. Good job. Good job. I didn't do that. I just went. Y'all did a great job. Good job. You know, <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't think, I, you know, I thought that was okay. <laughs> but anyway, I'm happy to be laying in my bed. And uh, I love my wife for when I said that, when I woke her up and said, listen, I'm thinking about having to do something. And she was all glad to get up and, you know, get dressed and go to the hospital with me and meet me at the hospital. She drove so we could drive home. Um, to basically say you're just full of crap. Oh, basically, I'm sorry. I should, I, the, that was the punchline, <laughs> and I didn't even get that. Yeah, for all that and all the testing and everything, all they said was, well, sir, we're, we're going to let you go. The only thing we could find was that you're full of crap. <laughs> and they sent me home. Yeah, because they did do a CT scan and all that. Yeah, did do a CT scan. They put the iodine in my system and sh uh, did the rawr, 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 rawr thing and <sighs> that was the diagnosis we all looked right. everything looks good your organs are all still there just a little backed up nothing's twisted drink Nothing water that, that. <laughs> you're just full of shit <laughs> oh i'm sorry full of crap mm -hmm. okay. so rowdy introvert i know you don't listen but that's <laughs> why i was up late keeping late hours last night yes. tweeting about chuck woolery dying because he said, why are you, I've never known you to keep such late hours. Well, that was what we were doing. And it's so funny, when we got out of there, it was about two thirty, three o'clock, which is about the time we normally get up. Right. I, I got home and it was like, oh, it's time to take my medicine now. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. We hadn't even been to bed yet. So, so. when we, we did go to bed, we went back to sleep yes. and I was sleeping so good. And then I was woken up again. <laughs> He woke me up again in, on purpose. He shook my, me on my hip and he's like, hey. In my sleep. He said, hey. And he started mumbling and talking and he and I realized, oh, he's dreaming. And he, I don't even know what you said, but I was like, I was kind of mad. Though. I was like, he woke me up again. <laughs> but I went back to sleep. I slept through that whole thing. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, we got the last, I think it was from maybe 3.15 to quarter to eight so yeah. was that right yeah somewhere yeah. in there we got a good sleep so yeah. we're good yeah we're good yeah i mean mainly i mean people might make fun of it or whatever saying you just had full of crap constipated went to the er ha, -ha but you did that because you know of people who have had twisted yes. intestines or whatever yeah. and it didn't turn out well and I didn't want to tell you this, but while we were sitting in the ER, you know, I'm scrolling through Twitter mm -hmm. X and one of the pat heads, her handle is called Queen of the Pat Heads, was requesting prayer requests for another pat head who has had medical problems and stuff. But sa she said he is in the hospital. He's had surgery for an intestinal, intestinal blockage. Uh, Sorry. Uh, 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 for an intestinal blockage and he is not doing well. Well, see. I didn't want to say anything to you, though. So. Yeah, and I had an employee that died from condition. He's just more, a little more serious, but like that. And I just was like, no, you know, I want to go get this checked out because I don't want to have something internally rupture and go. And get yeah. And I look at my wife. Because you say, were in so much pain. You. Yeah. I mean, there's being constipated and there's pain. So, I don't yeah, know. and this we did was, the right thing. This was not normal pain. And when it was yeah, for you normal. to wake me up in the middle of the night and say, "Hey, I need to," because who wants to do that? I didn't. Who wants to go to the ER on a Saturday night? No, you know. And so to me, that was you were serious and you I, were in pain. I was serious. Of course, you were. I was serious and I was in pain, but I woke up this morning. 
they gave me a little medicine that said that oh, yeah, this would help relieve and it did but i was still waiting on the gravy train so to speak <laughs> speaking of gravy come train. crown that yeah, track yeah, i got you all right, All right. what else? What else? You want to talk football because oh, it's gosh. so confusing. It's so confusing now. You know, now we're at 12 team playoff, and it's going to be the point now where only like five or six are going to deserve to be there. And it's like, well, who the hell are we going to pick now? Because, you know, you start going down the roller coaster. Well, A lost to B, and B lost to C, and C lost to D, and D lost to E. And E lost to A and B, but B and C lost to D. And D is better than B because B won't beat A. And then F, G, and I all deserve because they beat the teams that A, B, C, and D beat, lost to. But they lost to the teams that A, B, C won against. And then Alabama lost to Vanderbilt, so they shouldn't be in. Yeah. So where you know where do you go? Yeah. Where do you go? And last night I would have been watching football last night, but but we've started Bogart movies. Uh, but I knew that this was going to happen. That there was going to still be all this turmoil and them on the screens talking about what I just went over. And I looked. I said, you know, it's just time to watch movies because <laughs> I watched Georgia play yesterday, which you know they played a. Uh, team they should have beaten like they like they beat them. So it was mm-hmm. Georgia played the toughest schedule in in the nation, and you know this was their whack game, and of course they won. But uh, it was just it's it's so con- I guess convoluted. I guess would be the best way to put it. Convoluted that I just said let's just watch movies, and sure enough, Auburn beats Texas A and M. They should not have. Won- beating Texas a and if you look at the records. And then Oklahoma trounces Alabama. So basically two of the lower tier teams beat Alabama this year. Oh God, you know that they're already calling, they've got to already be calling for divorce demise. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, you know, uh, that's why we started watching movies last night. Yeah. That was the demise. So that's really all I've, all I've got. We still have lots of football left, though, right? Yeah. Because you got Thanksgiving, and yeah, then you got New Year. Yeah. Still lots of stuff happening. Yeah, and this is actually the time now we've gone through the diluted part of the NFL season. And I will start to watch a little bit more NFL football uh, with an interest. Whereas the first eight to ten games of the year, it's like, who cares? Yeah. But now you've gotten to the point where it's started to get sorted out and you can see where they're going. It's kind of like basketball or, or baseball. You know, what's what's the what's what's the point watching the first, <gasps> you know, 75 percent of it? Because all those games are just for making, you know, making the team's money. Yeah. Now I let's watch to see what's, yeah, what's I, going on. I, I, Baseball to me has become like your, yeah, in, like your college football, so mm-hmm. watered down and diluted. I don't know who's playing when, where, and you know I used to kind of keep up with it, but you yeah. know sort of. But you knew when they were coming on TV and playing, and you knew they were playing. Yeah, it what doesn't seem like now it's like such vastness. Mm-hmm. It's like what I don't understand, and so I lose interest. Yeah, I mean, one hundred and sixty-two games per season to see if you're going to get to the playoffs. You know, when you start the season, you're a team. When you get to mid-season, you're a totally different team. By the end of the season, you're a totally, totally different team. You're, you've changed so much through 162 games that you're not the same team you were when you started the season. So, you know, what's the point? Is You know, that's just my thing. What's the point? Why do you play 162 games? Yeah, you know, I don't know. I don't, I don't get it. So, anyway, so with the NFL picking up, and, you know, the NCAA or college football kind of winding down into it right now. It's just next week is is you know, what I call state championship week. Texas will play Texas A&M, Alabama will play Alabama, Auburn, Georgia, Georgia Tech, Florida State. Wait a minute. Florida State will play Florida. Uh, Clemson will play South Carolina, yada, yada, yada. So, That'll be that. Then we go on to the playoffs, and we'll see what happens with that. And and we have Thanksgiving week coming up. 
I'm only I only have Thanksgiving Day off. As far as I can tell, we're still going to have a podcast episode every day until then. Well, you know, every day next week. Yeah. But it is Thanksgiving week coming. I understand people's schedules are going to be off and everything, but we still plan to have an episode out every day. All right. Yeah. Question of the day. Okay. All right. We are going to talk about Donald Trump's cabinet picks thus far. The question is, who is your favorite and who is your least favorite? Right now, I think my favorite would be the Susan Wiles. Is that her name? Chief of Staff yeah. is my favorite. Least favorite I've heard is probably the Surgeon General, who is apparently very pro COVID vaccine yeah. and masking. Yeah, we used to see her on Fox News all the time. Very surprising that she picked Jeanette Rushwit as Surgeon. Yeah, that that surprised me because that's a give and go against what. Uh, Kennedy really stands for in a lot of things. So maybe the two roles that they have are separated to the point where we'll, that we don't know because, you know, we're not total experts on the whole thing. So What about you? Who's that. your favorite, least favorite? Well, you know, they aren't cabinet picks, mm. but Elon and... Oh, uh, yeah. And uh, Vivek. Mm -hmm. But I'd have to say for the cabinet... My favorite's gonna be, of course, Tom Homan. <laughs> oh yes, that's right. Yeah, that is I a like good. That. that is a number and I, one. And I, and I like how they named him Border Czar. Yes, <laughs> yes. You know, that's perfect. Uh, 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 the devil came to Georgia type thing. Sit right there. Sit right down here, and let me show you how it's mm -hmm. done. Fire on the mountain. Here we go. <laughs> mm -hmm. What about your least favorite? Uh, I said that already. Oh, you did? Did I? Didn't I? No. I said Jeanette Rush. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, so we both did. I say that? No, I said that, but um, you agreed with me. I so. agreed with that because I thought that was probably my least favorite pick for the whole thing. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, and I actually like her, and I like a lot of the things she says when she's on Fox. But right. I, I, you know, I don't know. Well, my favorite, favorite pick had quit Matt Gates. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. I Again, like I was saying, before, and we said this on a podcast before, I predicted that that was not, and that he was going to pick Bondi. Yeah, and I don't know. Why not just come out and pick her first? I, I, I get, again, I say it's playing their game. Maybe. It's playing their game. I think... I think it's the other way around. I think he picked Gates to satisfy the firebrand people. <laughs> really? Yeah. Knowing that he would probably bail out. I don't know. He may not have known about all that stuff about him. You think he would? Because uh, they didn't know about Pete Hegseth. Because Pete, Pete Hegseth did not tell the Trump administration about his problems with the woman and mm. the sexual all this stuff and paying I, her off I and I, from remember. what i understand the trump administration is not pleased yeah i could i can see that too i haven't heard that i hadn't read about that but you know. all you gotta listen to megan i know you're busy during the day megan kelly has covered it extensively a yeah. lot she, and, and you know and uh, to be honest i mean the woman is very not credible with her story if you read the whole report yeah, and not yeah. listen to little snippets of headlines on the news, because right. they're not going to tell you everything. Sure. But Megyn Kelly does go over it extensively mm -hmm. and points out all this stuff. And it's obviously it was to me, it was consensual. It was consensual. Yeah. But she got in trouble with her husband. No, oh, rape, rape, yeah, rape. Yeah. And it's, that's just wrong. Let me see how I can get out of this. And so he just pays her off. Think you know, just make her go away. go away. Blah, blah, blah. He not knowing that maybe later he would be, in this, but I would think I would tell Donald you know, Trump, yeah, be course, prepared for course, this. And of course, too, if it's, you know, when they pay people off like that, aren't they, you know, signing the, you know, you cannot say anything, or yes. you it must, yes. or you must pay back the money plus interest, and right. But apparently, it was just a so-called friend of hers that wrote the report and sent it to Mar-a-Lago. Well, Whatever, so, just so-called. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. we're not leaking it. Somebody else did. Yeah. But, you know, he he felt like he had to pay her off because, you know, back in that day, first of all, dumbass, don't have sex with strangers you don't know about. I don't care how drunk you are. That's just ridiculous, especially 
at the position you were in at Fox. Come on, yeah. Pete. Use your brain, not yeah. the other thing. Yeah, use the brain. I swear. You think you would know better. Yeah, yeah don't think with what I say. You should <laughs> say think with your head, not with your... Not the other one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So. But uh, I forgot where I was going with that train of thought. But anyway. Anyway, that's... Oh, he felt like he had a pair to, to keep her shut up. Because if any kind of allegation like that would got out, even if it wasn't true, even though it wasn't true... They would have fired him. Yeah. And he didn't want to lose his job. Yeah, exactly. Well, don't do those things, Mr. Pete. Yeah, exactly right. Don't do those things. Well, you know, we'll see what happens. Yes, all right. Got to go. It's been a great day, and we're going to get something to eat. And I hope everybody out there has a great day. Yes. And go. We'll be back again tomorrow. And go. Dog. Sick them. Sick them. Woof, woof. <laughs> What's that? Who pays? What's that? We're not a democracy!